So, full disclosure, I'm working for Hodl Hodl, and I was helping to organize this event. And also, I was translating um, exchange called uh, Robosats. I was translating it to Russian. So, my name is Tony, and yeah, today I'm going to talk about P2P. I guess most of you know the, um, one of the main problems of P2P, and namely they are KYC, you know your customer, custody of funds, fractional reserve, and of course the general gambling. Exchanges are allowing for that. So first of all, what's the problem with KYC? Obviously, when you give your pr private information, it is stored in one place. It's prone to being hacked, and then this information eventually gets leaked in the dark web. And uh, obviously, it's not only a digital threat, but it's very much physical threat. So here you can see a roadmap of standard KYC. So first of all, you give your information, question like your face, photo, then your address, you know where you live. And then also email, so a bunch of information is getting collected. Then this info obviously is getting leaked or hacked one way or the other. It gets to the dark web when people are buying it or selling it. And then eventually it becomes freely available. I don't know if you were at some online when the, I don't want to name any particular devices, but there was a big hack. And in my own uh, like Telegram and Discord group, there are files circulating with 250,000 names and addresses. So I'm from the smaller city. There are 50,000 people, and I pressed Control F, and I found five people who ordered a special device to their location, to their home. So I could literally go and open the door, and be like, "Hey, I know you're interested in cryptography. You ordered a special device. Let's be friends." And it was like it's literally in a Discord channel. Like, "Oh, guys, look at this." And there are two files. One was like one million emails and names, and then 250,000 like. Yeah, addresses and names. So this is not like hypothetical threat. I really strongly believe that like this kind of KYC requirements are illicit activities. You know, it's illegal to do that. Of course, the custody of funds, not your keys, not your coins. Everybody in this room, I think, understands this idea that whenever you give um, the ownership of your funds to any uh, you know centralized entity, you basically lose custody of these funds. And time and time again, you know, empty gogs collapse and other exchanges collapsing, and you basically won't see your money ever again. You know, when it happens, it's pretty sad. At the same time, yeah, if you give out the possession of your funds, it, uh, transactions can be frozen for any reason they see valid. So for example, some people like to play poker, and uh, if you do this transaction, it might not get confirmed. It just, it's just the exchange decides not to send this transaction. Or if you do privacy preserving techniques, you know, if you use CoinJoin to clear your coin, for whatever reason, you know, I believe privacy is a fundamental human right, so you should be able to clear the history of your previous transaction. But some exchanges, they see it as some kind of uh, bad activity and they can flag your account and then even eventually your account will be flagged and you can your, your access can be denied for any reason, you know, like oh you broke the terms and conditions of this particular exchange, it's pretty sad. Uh, degenerate gambling. Again, this is uh, I, I'm not gonna tell anyone how to use their money, you know, you know, everyone can spend and gamble whatever the way they like, but from what we see time and time again, that exchanges they're getting paid to list the token. You create a token, you pay money to exchange, it's getting traded versus other coins. And in reality, what happens is that the exchanges, they don't really care if you gain or lose money, you know, as long as you're bringing like home cold hard cash, they don't care, you know, they don't care what's, what's happening. And um, of course, there's opportunity to leverage, you know, it's a great idea, wow, you have 200 bucks, then you can trade with 10K and your profits are like maximized, like wow, it's such a beautiful idea. But in the end, we know that how volatile is Bitcoin and some exchanges, they literally draw their own know, dips, like if a big whale comes, like down, so you, you, I don't know if you follow, like there's this thing that's like, super crazy, they just go super down and up, and then whatever stop loss you have, this strategy, like nonsense, it just goes straight down. So leverage is, is really, uh, you know, destroying many, many people and many, many traders. Another interesting thing is that human brain is wired to see patterns. And um, like when we see, you know, clouds, like there's some cores, and um, this actually is called apophenia. So apophenia is a human tendency to see pattern in meaningless data. So we all know this, like, oh, head and shoulders pattern. Yeah, of course, if you have left, right shoulder, then when it breaks, it goes down, but if it doesn't break, it goes up. It's like, when you use the brain to make sense of the reality, you know it's fine. But when you use the same monkey brain to gamble on the price movements because other people believe the same way, you know, it's like, not, not ideal, not ideal way. And it's gone. So again, fractional reserve, when you're buying uh, Bitcoin or, um, on some central exchange, what you're getting is a number on the screen, right? It, it's not backed by the real asset, might never be backed by anything. And um, FTX users, like what, one million people, learned it the hard way. You know, and, uh, it was like 1.7 billion 
Yeah, one point seven billion dollars gone missing when it went bankrupt, and it's like it's just not there. Do you see it? But <laughs> it's literally like Excel spreadsheet. And okay, we have a number there. Fine. So very sad picture, and of course, you know, we have a solution. Have no fear. P two P is here. We have amazing. Like there are many more, like here and here, here as well. But not enough space in the slide. So hodl, hodl, bisc, robotsats. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of uh, robotsats presentation, and um, but for the sake of today, I will focusing on uh, hodl, hodl. But most of them, they have different features. You probably know they have different design uh, solutions. But most of them, in one way or the other, they solve uh, the problems I was mentioning earlier. So why P2P is different? Of course, it is more private. You know, you have custody of funds. You can do deals on your terms. It's transparent. Also, there is opportunity to earn, you know, arbitrage opportunities. So we're talking about that, and of course, they're secure. So, in case of Hodl Hodl, we don't collect uh, private information of users. The registration is straight up process. You receive an email, you confirm the email, and then you're good to go. Nothing. We don't collect any uh, KYC. There is nothing like that. And again, KYC is an illicit activity. I strongly believe that. But the views are uh, my own. Okay, in uh, this particular case of this presentation. So again, self-custody and hodl hodl. If you use it, you know that uh, there is no inbuilt wallet. It's technically not possible to rug pull uh, users because in order to interact with each other, you have to use your own devices, your own uh, yeah, uh, Bitcoin wallets. And again, uh, when the government is tyrannical and it gets restrictions you know, very heavily, P2P is the only way you can, not the only way, but one of the ways you can get and like buying Bitcoin through P2P is possible to go around the you know, tyrannical restrictions of the government, and that's super, super beautiful. So the escrow, how many of you, I'm just really curious to know, how many of you know what is two out of three multi-signature wallets? Two out of three multi-sig? Almost everyone. Okay, so, but I still then explain a few people don't know. So basically the escrow system in HODL HODL works in a way that you imagine the safe, it has three keys, but in order to open the safe, you need to use at least two keys, okay? So one key cannot open it, two keys can, uh, easily open the vault and in the same way there's like a digital vault that can be opened only through using two keys so when you initiate the creation of the escrow there is a multi-signature address which is basically in Bitcoin itself one key is with the buyer one is with the seller and with hodl hodl so we're not using any like uh, magic stuff we're leveraging the security and the properties of uh, Bitcoin itself so when um, Bitcoin is locked here, you can verify independently that it's staying there and it's not moving, and in this way you can send money to the other person. And you know that the, no one party will be able to just escape with the money. So as you can see, like uh, you can create offers in your own terms. You can select the price, you can select an amount and payment methods. If you don't see a payment method, you know, you can add your own. There are like caches available, gift cards, you know, a bunch of other stuff. In case you're wondering about the cash trades, yeah, it's the same. The person locks the Bitcoin in the escrow and then the cash transfer is better to do it in the public uh, space where there are cameras, there are many people. Don't go to the shady, dark places when, you know, no one will see you. Not very safe. And um, yeah, so you can literally buy Bitcoin uh, below market price uh, in some conditions, yeah. And like again, if you want to sell, you can sell it over the market price as well. Again, the fees are pretty transparent. You know, when you create an uh, offer, an order, you can see like, okay, how much money is going to be like going to the miner? How much money is going to be going to hodl? Very transparent. And at the same time, like I was saying before, when Bitcoin is inside of the escrow, you can verify it, the amount in the escrow through any you know blockchain explorer through your own node. Like it's very transparent, you can definitely see uh, that this Bitcoin is not moving. And the uh, arbitrage opportunity, if you have access to different fiat currencies or different payment methods, maybe you have a way to buy Bitcoin below the market price from your friend, you can definitely leverage the arbitrage opportunities when you do it at the same time. So for example, I can buy it with cash from my friend at the market price, and at the same time I sell it uh, through, let's say, Wise or Revolut, and then this like gap in between, this is your profit. And then again, you don't lose custody of your funds. You can earn like trading by yeah, leveraging arbitrage opportunity and some differences. Also, like if the market is very new, let's say in Singaporean dollars, not enough volume. If you're the only person selling Bitcoin at the Singaporean dollar market, then I guess like you can set theoretically any price, but it will be filled. That's a different question, but you can. And of course, I wouldn't be giving the full picture of P2P I won't be honest if I was not uh, talking about the disadvantages, and namely their low liquidity, the risk of scammers, and the speed. 
So uh, low liquidity, I was saying before, it's um, clearly that Bitcoin is not yet uh, extremely, extremely popular. People are still a bit skeptical. So when more and more people get educated about this, you know, they learn more. Eventually, the, there is more. There are more offers and also different payment methods. You know, you can use like PayPal, Wise, bank transfer, this and that. So. Uh, for now, yes, in some markets, in some particular markets, liquidity is pretty low. The risk of scammers. So obviously there are scammers everywhere, and uh, when you're talking about the internet, like in Bitcoin we say that like, everyone is a scammer, right? So again, uh, one of the tricky things is that some payment methods, they allow for chargebacks. So essentially when I am selling Bitcoin, I do the when I'm buying Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin is coming to me and I'm sending money to the person. And then I can call, let's say PayPal and say, can you reverse the money transaction? So essentially I got Bitcoin and then PayPal is going to give me back my money. So in this way, it's highly, highly recommended to everyone to study the risks associated with the payment methods. Now, so when you're using certain payment methods, uh, they're scammers, they can try this chargeback situation. Um, beautiful thing, uh, that HODL HODL has a reputation system. So whenever you do a trade, if you want, you can leave a review and a comment uh, when you, you know, finish the trade with the person. So this is super nice because essentially, uh, when you do a trade, you can say, okay, this person made a thousand trades and like all the comments are super nice. You can, you're pretty much sure that this person is legit and it's nice. Like you can, you can, you can trust. And the last one is the speed. So when there are two people, we're talking about P2P. It means that there are two people that are behind their devices. And sometimes internet goes down, sometimes electricity goes down. There are many different cases that, you know, or let's say there <laughs> someone minted some monkey JPEGs and the mempool is getting super clogged. You have to wait. And uh, that's one of the problems in, in P2P. Uh, the speed of, of the deals. But uh, again, we have this beautiful green dot and it's an indicator, as you can imagine, that the person is online, and then when you have a bunch of offers, they're pretty much the same, but one person is, let's say, gray offline, then it's like, okay, I will do trade with this guy, or like, you know, some yellow guy, he was like recently online. So we're trying to mitigate these uh, problems of P2P. And again, so key takeaways, um, right, respect to Giacomo in the morning, he was uh, showing this slide. I feel a blessed. So not your keys, not your coins. Obviously, everybody knows this. And uh, KYC bad, P2P good. Again, uh, for those of you who came in later, uh, when you give information of your home address, people can literally knock on your door and force you to give the keys. Doesn't matter if you save it and put it under the blanket or you know how. Like there are some setups that are definitely safe, but for most of the people, it, KYC puts us in the real physical danger of being attacked. Uh, because information is getting leaked all the time. And again, the general gambling, again, I'm not saying how you can spend your money, up to you, but to gamble with the you know, best money the world has ever seen, it's a suboptimal idea. So thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm up for questions. I don't know if we're following some timelines here. Then I'm ready. But uh, yeah, any questions? Take your time. I will take my time as well. Oh, yes, please. I have a fairly technical question, maybe. Uh, I'll try. I'm not super technical, but maybe I can. Or maybe someone else can pick up. Yeah, please. Okay, anyone else want to go here? Uh, I, so the question will be, in case the fiat transfer has some sort of issue, I guess they only go into a dispute. Correct. And then there will be a dispute solver. Correct. Like mediate in some way. Correct, yeah. Uh, the dispute solver, I guess it's only for you for the photo. Do they have a limit of how many disputes they can solve in a day? Uh, that's a very technical question. I think it depends on the capacity of the human to communicate and understand the issue. What if they don't want to understand the response to solve disputes? Do they have a limit? If they just, you're thinking like if they're just going to go as fast as possible yeah. through the, not to get too deep into understanding? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. I'll have to talk with the support team. Um, I'm not familiar with the dispute. I'm going to be super honest, I'm not familiar with how the disputes are being resolved, yeah. But I'm like, from what I understand, um, Devin jumps in the chat and asks to, from both parties to provide all the proofs of transfers. So it will be like a screenshot of, you know, the app that's making transaction, and then the, like a statement of receipt and like outgoing transactions, 
and compare it for that. I guess that would be the you know the initial idea. And depending also on because it's peer to peer, I guess it might take longer you know, to receive the, all these emails. But the limit on the amounts. I will verify and I can get back to you. If you'll be around, I can give you the exact number. But I, I would not I would not think that there is like a strictly I, it would not make sense if there is one because then it would make sense there is something beyond that. You think it makes sense? Oh yeah. Per per like per per day? Not to per, stop per dispute solver. Okay. There should be a limit on how many they can solve. Okay. Yeah, maybe there is one. Like I'm saying, I'm I, I have to verify. I'm just trying to yeah. So the limit in order to prevent people from just not paying enough attention and not like making the wrong decision in the process of this is unique. Let's say you have a rogue employee and someone who uh, says, I'm gonna take every order in the other book, I'm gonna solve it to myself. To myself? Yeah. And and put a link for the other forever. Never gonna see me again. What about that case? So we will uh, with the guy is trading himself. Yeah, yeah. He he takes every single order of the other book. Figures that dispute, solve all of the disputes, and leave. I see what you mean. Uh, then it's a question of uh, yeah, trust. How trustworthy is the support? Yeah, okay. I, I get it. It's a really good question. Yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah, I will verify it. I will talk to people and get back to you. Yeah. Makes sense. Awesome. Nice. Very good question. Anything else? Now I want to ask every P2P platform like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Even? It's good. Yeah, it actually makes perfect sense. Yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Internally, I guess there has to be some controls in our whole model because the reputation of the platform depends on the dispute solvers. Yeah, like I, yeah, like I was mentioning before, I have like like basically no connection with uh, this yeah. result, so I'm just trying to imagine here. But, but yeah, I will verify. Cool. Any more questions? Five, four, three, <laughs> two, and thank you so much.